Conservationists go to great lengths to maintain and increase the number of individuals within populations. But is managing numbers alone enough? A large population isn't necessarily any more likely to persist into the future than a small population. And the reason for this is genetic diversity. Every single living thing has its own unique genetic code, and individuals from the same species have more similar genetic codes to individuals from different species. But it's the similarities and differences between those individuals of the same species that make up its genetic diversity. And more genetically diverse populations are more likely to persist into the future, because they're more likely to be able to resist things like infectious diseases and to overcome changes in the environment. This is why zoos go to such great lengths to have complicated captive breeding programs. So genetic diversity should be a major priority of any conservation effort, but it's usually just an afterthought at best, and there's a very simple reason for this. You can't see genetic diversity. To measure genetic diversity, you need DNA, and that means going out, taking samples, and bringing them back to the lab for analysis. And that's what I do. I work with a butterfly species called the meadow brown, and I go out and collect samples, extract DNA back in the lab. I then use a molecular technique called microsatellite analysis. And what that does is give me a measure of how different the DNA of each individual is compared to all the other ones I've sampled. And what I can see from that is get an idea of how landscape affects gene flow. So I can see whether certain things act as corridors that allow the organisms to move through them, or if certain things act as barriers that completely prevent gene flow. What we've actually found for our species though are high levels of genetic variability, but low levels of genetic differentiation. Which basically just means that all of our populations have a good, healthy level of genetic diversity, but they're all pretty much the same. Which means that there's nothing stopping an individual from one population moving through our landscape to any of our other populations. They're all nice and connected, which is really good. But this is still just for one moment in time. If we really want to understand what's going on, we want to monitor these changes, we need to do this analysis year on year. And that's exactly what we've done using DNA from our species from 2012 onwards. And in doing so, we've discovered that the genetic diversity of the meadow brown in our subject area is stable. It's not decreasing over time, which is really good. But perhaps more importantly than this, we're starting to plug a gap in conservation biology, which is the monitoring of a wild species genetic diversity, other examples of which are distinctly lacking. But it's only through monitoring genetic diversity that we can get an idea of which populations that we should prioritise for conservation effort. And these may not necessarily be the smallest populations.